Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gummin. So today I thought I would just take you guys through my polishing procedure. I buffed up this Hyundai Tucson this afternoon and I thought well I may as well get my GoPro out and do some recording and show you guys some of the procedures I've been using lately and yeah some of the tools and the techniques that I've been doing lately. So. I've actually been having a bit of fun doing the detailing and buffing and polishing on my own car on the weekends. So that's actually why I decided to go and get this Flex Random Orbital Polisher, which you see in the first bag. And then I've actually also just gone and got myself a Milwaukee Mini Buff. Both of which are great bits of kit and they will actually be getting their own specific reviews. But um, they're still relatively new to me. So I want to spend a little bit more time with them. Um, just exploring their battery lives and their charge rates and just those kinds of things. You know, I, I like to go into depth with my reviews. But that's why I thought I would do this video here. It's not specifically a review on these tools. But just what I've been doing. And yeah, I guess a bit of a, a look at them. So yeah, uh, this car here, as I said before, I think it was a Hyundai Tucson. And I sprayed the front door. The rear door was actually a new door shell. I sprayed it the day before and then the quarter panel as well and I actually did all the um, the quarter uh, door jam the rear door jam as well um, but yeah so the first step was to just give it a good clean down well a light clean down it, it really would have only been a layer of dust from sitting around the panel shop while it was being um, refitted while the car was being put back together um, and then go and give some of those trims a bit of a mask up so if those door handles were not chrome I probably would have thrown a piece of masking tape over them. So the plastic ones, I've done it once. So I went through my probably 18 years of my trade. I hadn't burnt one yet. I burnt it once and I will never not cover one up, if you know what I mean. So it's like, yes, once bitten, twice shy, you don't make the same mistake again. Well, I, I try not to anyway. But yeah, another thing that you can do a bit of damage to is the bare plastic mouldings, like the trims and stuff like that. So I always make sure I throw a bit of masking tape over them as well. Um, another thing that uh, is advantageous too, like those belt moulds, sometimes you can get some of the compound up underneath the belt moulds on the tops of the doors and the rubbers around these quarter panels and stuff like that, around those quarter glasses. Um, so that's another reason why it's actually handy to put a bit of masking tape on there So it's it's not just to protect the part. It's also for the cleanliness You've always got to think about the next person in line if you want the last person in line to think of you That's the way I see it anyway Like I don't like it when a panel beater say comes and brings a car just covered in bog dust into the paint shop because well then it's just something that I've got to do so I try to hand, hand my work over to the detailer in the best condition as you know within reason obviously like his job is to clean it but I'll do my best to remove you know most of the the mess that I've made um, and then he can do his job from there on so either way we went over all those nibs with a tungsten so that's what I was doing first that's a little tungsten denibbing tool and like anything you've got to be careful with it but you know they are pretty safe to use I find as long as you hold them nice and flat um, and you don't go up with too much of an angle so I've found that you want to angle them sort of like down towards the panel you don't want to go too sharp of an angle with those tungstens when you are shaving the run but what I have found is you want to actually it, you can increase the angle a little bit as you go so when you start off you want to have a nice and flat like just on a, a very uh, light angle and then you can actually hold it up and bring it up onto a sharper angle as you start digging into the little um, the denim, but again, that's just one of those things. You, you just gotta, you gotta get things wrong. That's that's the way I've learnt this trade, man. Like it really is. It's you've just gotta get in there. You gotta burn. Like I've burned panels before, but to be honest, it's been a long time, a really long time since I've ever done a burn through um, on a panel like this. You know, it just about never happens. Like I think probably the last time I did do a burn through was that door handle I told you about, and that was a few years ago. And to be fair. The car had only just came out of the booth. It was one of those Friday rush jobs. And it probably wouldn't have happened if the paint had been left overnight, like usual. So this job here, I sprayed the night before. Um, one thing that did actually happen with the clear coat on this, I'm not sure if you guys noticed it at the start, but it had just pinched back. It sort of like just hazed off. So when I sprayed this car, it was like high 30s uh, temperature. So for the Americans, that's like coming up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit so really really hot day now most of the time I use fast hardener and 
I was going to use slow hardener on this, but a lot of the like a lot of the stuff that I do around the workshop, I do on muscle memory, and I must have just grabbed the wrong hardener. So <laughs> I actually wasn't even thinking. I'm like, I, I must have just by muscle memory gone and grabbed the fast hardener because I usually do. And you are pretty right. Like below 30, you're pretty right to use your fast hardener. Yeah, pretty much anything below 30. But you really don't want to be using fast hardeners at the high 30s unless it's something like a single panel or like a door mirror or, or something like that. Just a small part, you'd probably be okay. But um, yeah, it was just an accident. And look, it is what it is, man. You just got to fix it. And at the end of the day, it's actually not that big of a deal to fix. Um, you just got to buff it up. That's that's all there is to it, really. You just got to make sure that you get good coverage of, on, the, on the buff. And... It'll just pop up, you know, and, and it'll just um, yeah, come up to nice and glossy again. So, yeah, I like using these 3M pads. I actually introduced them into the workshop. Like, they were using these, oh, I don't even know the brand, to be honest, but they were like um, a small foam mop, and they would just bust apart in no time. So, yeah, like, my boss didn't like it at first. He's like, hey, what's this? Like, he's thinking it's really expensive. I'm like, man. If you actually do a cost comparison, you're saving money with these. Dead set, you are. You will save money. He's like, oh, but they're double the price. I'm like, yeah, but you get two sides on them, you know? And they last three or four times. Like, a they last a ludicrous amount of extra time than the ones that we were using. So, yes, we definitely are saving money on using the 3M pads. And I'm a big fan of them. They actually cut really fast. So, 3M has a bit of a coloured system, so the green pad goes with the green compound, and then the next stage is the black pad um, goes with the black compound, and I think they've even got a white one that goes after it. So, look, polishing is one of those things that most panel shops I've worked in, they've always got their own bit of a mixture. You'll mix and match, you know, so, and it doesn't really matter. You can use whatever cutting compound you prefer. So, you might say love the 3m fast cut which is what i was using here in case you missed that so like i'm actually a big fan of that it does cut very fast i mean it's in the name um but then you might love say the roops uh the glaze the roops fine glaze which to be honest i actually quite like i i like how it's got that little um it's a watermelon smell to it yes yeah, it's, it's <laughs> pretty cool funny thing to say about compound i like the smell of it but yeah like some of them do have distinct smells like yeah, the Roops compounds are actually quite good, to be honest. And even the Roops pads, to be honest, they are actually really good too. Really good quality, which is what you see me using here. So this pad here is a Roops, and that's on the Flex Orbital Buffer. So this is, again, one of my newest tools, and one of my favorite tools. So originally, I was going to get a corded version. And I was talking to Chris from Spray Guns Direct about getting this. And I'm like, man, I really want the corded one, you know, because I didn't trust a battery powered one and it, he really had to talk me into it and I'm like okay well I'll go with this one just because you're recommending it and I'll tell you what man I am a convert I'm totally converted for me the biggest thing is just the convenience like sometimes I'll be there in the paint shop and I'll be like oh you know what I'll just shine this up that was actually before I got that mini buff to be fair I'm not really using this for spectro readings as much now that I do have the mini buff so yeah, one of the guys from work, I was showing him uh, this Flex Orbital Polisher here, um, and he's like, oh man, have a look at this mini buff that I was looking at getting, because he's doing his PDRing, and he's, uh, so sometimes when the PDR techs, they need to do a little bit of a, buff, a spot buff here and there uh, before they do their PDRing. So he's like, oh, have a look at this thing, it's 350 bucks, and I'm like, man, I'm on it. I was like straight on it. And yeah, that thing is totally awesome as well. I, again, like it's gonna be getting its own specific yeah, review thanks, as this buff will too. But yeah, I just need to spend a little bit more time with them to know exactly what I think of them. You know, I wanna to get to know their strengths and the weaknesses. And um, yeah, but I, I will actually say that, that I'm exclusively going to be a Roops pad user. I've found that these yellow pads are the best, I think. So they're not actually the finest. There is a finer grade above these yellow ones there's like an ultra fine and that's a white one so look it's one of those things that they are great as well but i just find that for general use for panel shop usage these yellow pads are just fine but yeah like another thing i'd like to mention is like if you're um if you think there's anything that i can do better let me know and i mean that in all honesty like i'm a pretty adaptive person and i always like to try different things and that's across the board like with spray painting I was actually thinking just the other day, like, um, 
So if you go back and watch my first videos on this channel, I started uploading to this channel, I created this channel in 2014. If you go back and watch my spray painting videos from back then, and then you go and watch them now, you'll see, well, there's actually a fair bit of stuff that I'm doing differently. And that's no different when it comes to buffing and detailing and stuff like that. So I do mean it in all honesty. If you think that I can do something better, let me know. You don't have to be a jackass about it. You don't have to act like I don't know what I'm on about because I obviously do. <laughs> like I know what I'm doing. Like I, I, yeah, I, I did do my four-year apprenticeship, and I've been doing this stuff for 20 years. You know, started my apprenticeship in the year 2000 before there was even dual action polishes. Um, well, they may have been around, but I didn't know about them. I still remember we were having issues with um, with swirls, and we ended up just using the orbital sander, man. That's what we used to have to do sometimes. We'd get these small pads, and we'd just throw them onto the, the sander, like the 5 mil orbit sander, and it, it saved our asses a few times. Like, we're working on, like, nice black... It was like a nice, really nice black VS Commodore. And for the life of me, I just couldn't get rid of those swells. I was in and out of the workshop, going out into the sun. Back in those days, I didn't use headlights. So yeah, look, I've actually watched this space progress quite a long way. We didn't have any of those microfibers. Nah, man, forget about it. You just get the best t-shirt rag you could get, you know? So it's actually, it's come a long way. It really has in the 20 years I've been in the trade. Um, but look, to be honest, I was also thinking about it the other day and I'm glad that I actually got to see the trade progress because I think it gives me a bit of a deeper understanding and, and knowing how to do it with, like to do panel shop quality work without all those tools, I think that makes you understand it even better. Like, I th it's easier to do it with all, all the new current technology, I believe that it is anyway. We didn't even have any of these mini buffs, man. Definitely didn't have a cordless mini buff. On that point, that's where I absolutely love this thing, you know? So, like, this is what you see me doing here. Like, there was a last minute D-nib. Just, it just caught, me, caught my eye, and I'm like, nah, I don't want to leave that one. So it's really not that big of a deal. Get your piece of 2000, give it a quick scuff back, get your mini buff, zip zip, and then get my orbital polish again, zip zip over the top, wipe it off with your microfiber, and you're done. No walking over the other end of the walk workshop because you need to go and get another bit of sandpaper. No, I've got it all set up in my little bags. Grab my bags, off to the detailing bay, and buff the car up. And yeah, like it really is actually quite enjoyable for me. So look, to be honest, I don't mind the detailing on my own car. I don't mind buffing other people's cars because that's my job. That's part of my job. You know, I've sprayed it. I'll buff it. Um, but I don't want to clean your car, man. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I like keeping my own car clean, but I'm not going around cleaning up your mess. You know, I'm not the kind of person that likes going and cleaning up your dirty uh, Snickers or Mars bars on the back seat. That's not me, you know. I mean, I'll do it if I absolutely have to. But spray painting is what I like, and I don't mind keeping my car clean. So hats off to the detailers. But at the end of the day, like I started down the bottom, I used to I used to do car cleaning, at, you know, part of your apprenticeship. Detailing wasn't even a term when I started, man. I swear it was not. Like back in yeah, two, early two thousands, detailer, what's that? We, you didn't even hire detailers. You hired car cleaners. This was a painter's job. The painter would do all the buffing and that. You didn't have detailers that were like cleaner slash polish techs, you know? So, look, I'm not complaining, man. These days we do. We're spoiled. Like, yeah, most of the time, painters don't even come out into the detailing bay and do any buffing. But yeah, this is just a bit of a close-up look at a couple of my tools here. So, look, I'm not going to lie. At the start, I didn't like this flex because... Look, to be fair, I was uh, I was buffing up some scratch-resistant clear, and like the first time I was using it, I, I had all these thoughts going through my head. I'm like, oh man, what have I just gone and got? Like, am I going to have to give this a bad review? I've heard other people talk so good about it, and then I'm like, oh man, I'm buffing scratch-resistant clear. <laughs> so yes, fair to say I've definitely warmed to it since then, and talking about the heat, um, it's actually good for not overheating. To be fair, like it was a 40 degree day. So to go up by only four degrees, that's actually not too bad at all. Well, thanks for watching me rant on and polish this job up. And yeah, if you've got anything else to add to it, any, any tips or tricks, let us know in the comments down below. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality collab 
branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies, and t-shirts, so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested. All that aside, I'd just like to say a big thanks for watching, and that is enough to support the channel. But as I say, if you'd like to go the next step, then be sure to check out some of that merchandise. Thanks for watching, and until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Gunman out.